After the year and a half we've just been through, you can understand the desire for Idahoans to get out, get back out there and get back to doing what we're used to do, what we are used to doing, I should say, this time of year. And with more than 100,000 miles of river in Idaho, you can bet whatever you might be doing this time of year well, might include taking advantage of some of those miles. However, right now there seems to be a limit on how much water is available in Idaho's longest river, specifically through the Hell's Canyon complex. Kirk Kilgore of Kilgore Adventures has been running jet boats in Hell's Canyon since the turn of this century, taking adventure seekers through class five rapids in one of the most scenic stretches of the deepest gorge in North America. So water is a big part of his business, but this season, he says, has been like none other because of a lack of water. And he says it's not just his bottom line that's feeling the brunt of it. For the past two decades, Kilgore Adventures have taken their jet boats up the Snake River and into Hell's Canyon. It's a season that starts in mid-May and runs nearly every day into October. They lost a good chunk of last season because of the pandemic restrictions. So this season, they were hoping to be back full throttle. It's a struggle. It's a struggle and it's really frustrating because everyone's here and ready to go. This is the biggest season we've ever seen on the book. So people are wanting to go out. However, owner Kurt Kilgore says they've been limited again, not by a health crisis, but by a water one. This is June, you know, so normally we're running class five, you know, 20 to 50,000 cubic feet per second. And uh, here we are at 6,500, <laughs> which is crazy. You can see what he's talking about on the USGS stream gauge. During the day, water coming down the Snake River below the Hell's Canyon Dam is below 7,000 cubic feet per second. But then at night, it nearly doubles to around 15,000 CFS. So what does that mean for you? How have you had to adjust? To be honest, we're still adjusting. Um, we're just following the water. We're catching the wave when it comes. The problem is, you know, when they open it at the dam, it takes several hours to get down the river. So there's a big time delay. Where before you would leave like at 10 a.m., is that correct? Or Yeah, we would leave at 10 a.m. and uh, we would get back at 4. So today my, my tour starts at two. <laughs> then we hurry, you know, we get up there and back to try to, you know, make sure we, we get up the river and, and uh, you know, just complete the whole trip. It's kind of like, you know, going to Yellowstone Park and they say you can only go in there during the night. You know, it's not very helpful, so. What would help, Kurt says, would be for Idaho Power to release more water earlier in the day. Instead of going so high at night, we could give us and the recreators and the rafters and everybody a little bit more water during the day and maybe not go as high as at night. Um, and I understand hydro is a huge deal and very important and we're pro agriculture as well, but it's like at some point, how much is too much? You know, the river needs the water, you know. In his conversations with the power company, Kurt knows this fluctuation in flow with higher water in the evening and lower during the day is not a new one, but it is a more pronounced shift this season. And that shifting in part is our integrating of solar generation onto the system. So our customer load or customer energy need in the summer uh, peaks in the evening and that hasn't changed. But what has changed is solar generation has come onto the system. But then as the sun starts to go down, hydropower picks up to make up the difference. Okay, so there's no need basically for Idaho Power to run that water through there to generate power. Not as much as there used to have been, you know, in, in, the, in the past uh, without that solar, then that, that uh, need would have been filled by more hydropower generation earlier in the day. Not only that, they know they're going to need that water later. So they are holding on to what they have coming in. And even that hasn't been as much as they are used to seeing. We look upstream at the Snake River at Weezer. That's a really good indicator of what flow is coming into the, the Health Canyon complex, into Brownlee Reservoir in particular. And it's running at 8,000 cubic feet per second, which is about uh, a third of what we should see normally for this time of year. If these outfitters tell you that that's not enough water during the day for them to operate and to sustain their business and their customers, yeah. what can be done about that? You know, it's, it's a challenge because we not only have the operators, we also have the recreation users in the reservoir and we have water quality components and we have all of these things that we're trying to take into consideration when we make these operational decisions. And I think that water users across the region 
are, are impacted by these low water conditions. And so, yeah, we absolutely emphasize the impacts that it's having on, on all, all water users. Certainly, this isn't the first low water year in Idaho, which is why Kurt believes there could be a better solution that would work for more stakeholders. You know, we're operating on a river that should be naturally flowing 30 to 40,000 right now, and it's at 6,000. And at what point is that too much, you know? Idaho Power says they also had to release water earlier this year, uh, no, earlier than normal, I should say, because of the federal flow augmentation. That's the requirement to let water go downstream to help salmon get downstream to the ocean. They also pointed out the Hell's Canyon complex is the company's only storage along the Snake River, which has the obvious effects on the river directly downstream. Unfortunately, Idaho Power says this flow pattern not likely to change anytime soon. They suggest for all river users, the best solution is communication and keeping tabs on their forecast flow monitors. As for Kilgore Adventures, they know they aren't the only ones subject to these water levels. All the restaurants, the motels, the RV parks, the outfitters and other guides in the area rely on the river, drawing in the customers. The last thing they want is for people to make plans they can't keep. So they just want a schedule that they can rely on and works for everyone. So you heard Cresta Davis from Idaho Power say they're getting about a third of the water into the Hell's Canyon complex than they normally get, and that's a big deal. But it's not the only place in Idaho dealing with a significant, a significant shortage of water. In fact, according to the U.S. Drought Monitor, Blaine County is the driest place in Idaho as of last week. The lack of snowpack this past winter and not enough rain this spring has left most of the county in extreme drought and in some parts exceptional drought, which is the worst ranking they have. What has that done to water storage and availability for farmers? Well, let's look at the Magic Reservoir. Not the biggest by any stretch. It's about 3,600 acres and holds about 191,000 acre feet of water. And it feeds about 40,000 acres of farmland north of Shoshone and the Richfield and Dietrich areas. On an average year and last year, at the end of May, it had about 130,000 acre feet of water in it. This year, on June 1st, it had just under 22,000 acre feet. And as of today, 8,761, which is 4% of capacity. So you can see how it's changed over the years. And that's why the Big Wood Canal Company that regulates the reservoir stopped releasing water last week, June 10th at noon, after just 27 days of delivery. Usually on an average year, they have enough water to last until the first couple of weeks of October, I was told. Last year, it lasted to September 30th. And I spoke with the water manager this afternoon, and he said this is the worst water situation he has ever seen. And the worst it's been for the Magic Reservoir for at least the last four decades. How bad was our water year in Idaho? Well, from 130,000 acre feet to 8,000 at the Magic Reservoir. The reservoir that's turned into a pond in just the past 12 months. And this has a literal trickle down effect. Just this afternoon, Idaho Fish and Game issued a fish salvage order, meaning because they shut down the Magic Reservoir, releasing water from there, there won't be enough water coming down the Big Wood River or the Richfield Canal. So for about a mile and a quarter of the Big Wood River below the dam, they are removing limits on how many you can catch or how you can catch them. You still have to have a fishing license. You still can't shoot them or electrocute them, but Here's your chance to bring home as many trout as you can from the Big Wood River before they run out of water to live.